is a record on this computer. Okay, good. So, uh, hello, welcome, Yeni. Thank you. My, my name is Andrea Gatman. I am coach and trainer developing Act on Learning, uh, intending to be a platform for local training uh, with global support. And uh, I have been acting as a teacher's training since 2016 with uh, Eunios in Finland. And uh, there is where I met uh, Jenny. So Jenny, tell us a few words about yourself. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Jenny. I've been working as a teacher for almost, well, 20 years. Uh, and at the moment, I teach fifth graders. And every Tuesday I work as a tutor teacher, so I go around other schools teaching other teachers for, for example, ICT skills or social skills or about assessment. Okay, so Jenny, let's dive in. Um, the topic is uh, how to make teaching feel easy. And the first uh, question goes around the joy of the teacher. Yeni, I have heard you before COVID-19 pandemic, but especially since March in our webinars, telling the teachers, do new things you like, access free resources for teachers, learn something new you are passionate about that you can use then in the class as well. Can you break down this process for us? Meaning how do you clear the agenda, the gutter to connect to your own interests and uh, make time for this? Okay. Well, uh, one of the things I do a lot is that I'm listening and learning together with my students. For example, I had to learn how to edit videos. It was hard for me at the beginning. And then I asked my students, I know they make, for example, these TikTok videos, yeah. And I asked them, what is the best video uh, edit program? Then I got them to teach me the use. It was easier for me that they taught it for me. So I think uh, you have to notice the things you can learn from the kids and don't be afraid to let them teach you because they are very good teachers. And when they teach you, they usually learn something about themselves at the same time. Uh, if there is something the kids know, don't know, they are usually faster learners than I am. So, for example, when we got new robots, we studied the robot, uh, robots uh, together. We opened the boxes together and read the instructions. And, well, it actually went that they learned it faster than I. So I think uh, this angle I use is because it makes me feel the same they do. When What does it feel like to learn a new thing? It's very good for the te teacher to feel this, have the same feeling as the pupils have when learning new things. And one more point, when you like doing something in general, you just find time for it, I think. Even it feels like hard work. It's like playing all day when you have the passion for it. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, you joke in your presentations and you say, well, I am lazy. And then you positively encourage teachers to find tools which already have embedded many futures materials already developed. So they work less. Make your work um, as little redundant as possible. Again, break down this process for us. How does it look? Well, uh, I think it's very important for the teachers that you have time to like search and play or practice the new thing and to investigate new things. Uh, so because of that, I think I use a lot of e-learning material. You have very good ones on the internet. And I use a lot of Google tools and such. They give me very eff effectively uh, like uh, information about the assessment for pupils learning, like Google for Forms. It's very easy to make and you can just put it to correct itself. You have time to for other things at, the, at that time. It takes a very long time with the pen to correct the exams but the Google Forms does it by themselves. 
And as, as I said before, do the things together with the kids or make them do the material. For example, it's very beneficial for the kids to do the homer, homework assignments for the other, other pupils. They learn about the stuff when they make the assignment. And of course, cooperate with your colleagues when you plan and do the things, for example, in Google Classroom. Only one has to do one mathematical exam and the others can copy it. It saves time. And I think it's very good to be lazy sometimes. Leaves room for the uh, playfulness and thinking. Yes, it leaves. Okay, so we talked about and you break down the process for the joy of the teacher. Now let's uh, look at the joy of the students, of the, of the kids. Um, you also funny mentioned the ones uh, that are born already with computers. Gamification. How do you use gamification without uh, so much risk of um, too much distractions for learning? I know you can be a very serious teacher, I have seen you, mm -hmm. and equally funny and open, as you have already explained to us. Uh, I think you can use games very wisely. You have to feel the right situ situation, when to use the games for motivating like the lazy boys to learn something. Sometimes you can use them for assessment and also for learning new things. You just have to use the uh, choose the games you use wisely so they don't bother the learning process. And with games I have to admit I'm a total beginner. I'm very bad at playing any games, computer games, because I grow up with like paper games, paper made board games. But I can make them play learning games, even though I'm very bad at them myself. You have to like go out of your comfort zone and somehow like let's control loose a bit, even though you let tell them what to do. I think you can do it, do it at the same time. Yeah, you already mentioned this at the beginning that you are a tutor teacher as well and in many of your programs you support other teachers with digitalization and using digitalization in, the, in their yeah. daily teaching. Each time I visit you, you do something else new with digitalization. But equally you are supporting uh, with school clubs, life skills. You kept on mentioning during this uh, little interview, this podcast. Um, so how how does this work? How you use in these um, in these clubs? How to put a tent? How to go camping and so on? I know you went to Lapland this September. Tell us a few things. How do you connect? Please. Oh, you are to, now uh, you are lines. talking about the Erayormas or campfire yeah, yeah. kids in English. One of my favorite things, I think, and that actually gives me like the positive energy to do other stuff. And I think you can easily combine these two things. Kids these days, they need to learn about the life skills and natures and how they, how they build up the resilience for these, you know, the 21st century. Uh, computer kids. And I don't think these two things like nature and computers are against or opposite to each other, but we can teach the kids how to make them like digital content creators and perhaps make them promote, for example, going hike, hiking to other kids. So like make them uh, take advantage of the computers and uh, phones that way. Yes. Okay. Uh, finally, I know you won a Fulbright scholarship and you, you will be a visiting teacher in US next year. Last uh, invitation to break down this process for us to building an uh, easiness to teaching. How did you get into applying to this? What is the idea behind, especially now during this uh, pandemic year in which many teachers felt the need to maybe go back to what they know and stay in a safer, whatever meant safer area. Okay, well, as you might all already now uh, know, I like learning new things. 
I might even say one of my hobbies is like learning or exploring new things. I think everybody should go at least a little bit out of their comfort zone. I just saw an ad in the teacher Facebook and I thought this would be a great learning experience for me. Why not to apply for that one? I don't even know if I get in. As a topic for this Fulbright, I chose the STEAM education, so science, technology, engineering, arts and mathematics. I'm, and I'm actually very bad at mathematics. It's not my thing, but I thought this would be something I would like to know and learn a lot about. If there is a possibility for me to learn something new like this and get to know a new culture, I also like traveling, of course I have to apply. Why not? I think even though this year has been very negative for many of us, you have to remember that there are still possibilities and great times to come. And as a teacher, well, well, once again, this puts me in a position of a student learning new things, going out for what the life offers. Thank you very much, Yanni.